Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Underrail Expedition with me, Bring It On. Uh, so we're currently back at Foundry. I came here to buy some crafting supplies, but uh, I found a random encounter instead. This guy right here. A forlorn grandpa stares at you with foggy eyes, but more out of habit, it seems, rather than because he can actually see much of you. Ah, do you have a coin, sir or ma ma'am? I am but a frail old man who cannot work no more. Please be kind. One coin. That's all I'm asking. And I will give you 100 coins. Give him 100 Stygian coins. Visibly astonished by your generosity, the man feels the pile of coins in his hands for a few moments before expressing his gratitude. My, I've never met a human being more kind and good and... and... I don't know how I can possibly thank you for... His murky eye sheds a lone tear, a tear which travels across his wrinkly face and hits the top of the coin pile in his hands. May... may life be as kind to you as you were to me. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, old man. And so long. Alright, so I still plan on grabbing some crafting supplies while I'm here. And then we're gonna head back up to the uh, upper underrail, the Epione Labs, or Epion Labs, how do you say it? Epione. Alright, do you have anything worth buying? 128? No, that is awful. 127? Ugh. 143? Well, I'm glad I wasted my time coming here. Because none of those were worth, uh, worth grabbing. Let us go to... Do I need to drop off anything? I do. So let's go to residential real quick, and then we'll head up to Upper Underrail. I do believe the beggar is only a random encounter, um, so we won't see him again despite my grandiose act of kindness. Also, I'm curious about this guy. So he came after me by himself. I'm wondering if he had any colleagues. I don't need these, they don't weigh anything, so I'll just hold on to them. Not a big deal. Alright. Let's get out of here. I am sad I never got the quest that's going to take me here. Um, I looked it up again after last episode. So the uh, the lab that we explored last episode has to do with the quest chain that I didn't that I messed up with Abram in the beginning. Uh, back in Junkyard, he asked me to report on the Protectorate inside of the Embassy in Junkyard. So we'll never know what's in inside there. I'm mean, gonna have an idea of what's in there. Um, is this not empty? No, it's got a bottle in it. Okay. Alright, well, Epio and Labs, let's see what's inside. The soldier stops you. Oh, Protectorate. Not what I was expecting. Oh, this is a restricted area, citizen. I'm gonna have to order you to leave immediately. 
Uh, what is this place? That's none of your business. Leave the area now, or I'll be compelled to use force. Am I clear? Yeah, I got the message. I'm off. Okay. So maybe I come here for the protectorate quest line. Which is where we're gonna head now. So our next priority is the protectorate quest line, and then we'll worry about the Institute of Church. I really hate having to talk over that guy. Oh, that's right, I need to unequip all my stuff so they don't get mad at me. Should be in the clear, I'm going to quick save anyway, just in case I'm not in the clear. Alright, I don't know where I'm supposed to go. Fraser? Fraser? Huh, who are you? Actually, it doesn't matter anyway. He waves you away. Alright, where do I need to go? He said to the left. Should probably quick save before I mess this up. Wow, imagine fighting your way through here. the case. Defect is for military personnel only. Okay. Fine, fine, fine. All right, I don't know which way I was supposed to go. Can I go over here? Stop. You don't have permission to enter this area. He motions you to turn around. The consulate is in the opposite, or opposite way. Okay, thanks for the reminder. All right, then we will go this way. I'm assuming he's up here. Weird that you would have those dreadnoughts active all the time, and not just when you were under threat. Like it's a bit of a waste of resources, right? Can I talk to Branko here? Or is he gonna get mad if I open up this door? It's probably You're not supposed to be here. Out. Okay. Is her name Nancy? Take the door behind me. Uh, the council is expecting you. This one. Colonel Cathert. Yes, says the man behind the table with a heavy, booming voice. He's an older gentleman of high rank, as his general appearance suggests. You notice him squinting at you, and you observe his eyes working hard to keep you in focus and the image clear. His eyesight must not be as precise as it once probably was. Still, other than that, he seems to be in good shape for a man of his age. I'm looking for Consul Oliver. Then you enter the wrong office, even without even knocking. Consul Oliver's office is the one next to mine. I'll knock next time, I promise. I have no doubt you will. After you finish with the consul, come see me. I'll be in the office. I'm not gonna knock. I lied. Consul Oliver. Wow, he, he looks... evil. He looks just like an Imperial officer. Anyway. The consul is looking at his mobile computer as you step into his office. He says something into it before placing it aside and rising to greet you. Even though certain facial features give away his age, which you suspect is around 40, 40 to 50 years, his athletic physique and energetic handshake projects an image of someone much younger than that. He shakes your hand, smiles with a white smile almost identical to the one you saw in Ambassador at Thanos, and speaks. Welcome to the United Nations Consulate, Brondon. It is a pleasure to have you here. It is a pleasure to meet you too, Consul Oliver. So it is mutual. He laughs. Make yourself comfortable, Brondon. It must have been a long journey from junkyard to here. The uh, Fort Apogee, or Apogee, is most certainly not in the neighborhood. I can tell you that. You're right, Brondon. It is not. We're separated from the lower region by Core City, and you know what the situation is like there, I'm certain. Shall we get down to business? The ambassador informed me that he told you about why you're here, or better yet, what you'll be doing here if you chose to join the Protectorate. Since you made such a long journey here, I have no doubts you'll soon become one of us, so to speak. However, you'll decide that upon discussing it with the Colonel. Now, do you have any additional questions before we move on to the next phase? Did you understand everything so far? Uh, the Ambassador told me I will be performing important tasks for the Protectorate. 
Can you tell me more about that? That question is more suited for the Colonel. Excuse me, Colonel Cathard, who will be quite soon be who will quite soon become your superior officer. Still, know that everything you do will be for the ultimate betterment of the region. Most military operations here relate to fighting bandits or the dreadful free drones. Again, all for the betterment of the citi citizenry and the region. You will, as I was told, be tasked with performing things of greater importance. Why did Ambassador Athena sent me to you and not directly to the commanding officer of Port Apogee, Fort Apogee? The reason for that is simple, Brandon. You have a dual purpose here. Let's call it like that. On one side, you're a member of Southgate Station, our trading partner, and hopefully one day, a full member. We already cooperate with Miss Vera Hale, but on a limited scale. With you here, we are building a closer diplomatic connection with SGS, and that is why it is desirable for the two of us to get to know each other well. Also, we are taking a slight detour when it comes to you becoming a member of the armed forces. This is usually not the way the willing join under rail protectorate ranks, am I right? Don't worry, we have already convinced the colonel, and I am sure he will see your qualities quickly. Which brings us to the other part of that, um, dual purpose I was telling you about. But I better leave that part to the good colonel to explain. He's certainly better suited for it than I am. Uh, who's in charge of Fort Poggi? Colonel Frederick Cath Cathcart. I said Cathard earlier. Cathcart. He's been in charge since Fort Poggi's deployment. You'll meet him soon enough. Alright, I'm good. Can we, we can move on. Excellent. That's important. Everything should be clear. Now we can proceed. The next step should be meeting the colonel. I've already talked to him about the train, free drones, the political situation, etc. Just so you know that he's familiar with the details. You should see him now. His office is right next to mine. After you're done with him, please come see me once you have the time. I have something I wish to discuss with you. That's it, Brandon. Talk to the colonel and we'll see each other later. Au revoir. I like his office. Alright, let's talk to the colonel. Yes? I talked to Consul Oliver and he told me to see you. So, that part is done. Good. Very good. And now, allow me to properly introduce myself. I'm Colonel Frederick Cathcart, Base Commander at Fort Apogee, the headquarters of Underrail Protectorate Military Operations in South Underrail. Your name is known to me already, Brandon. I've heard a lot about you so far, and I've yet to confirm if, it, if all that is indeed true. Hmm. Care for a cup of mushroom tea? Yes, I would like a cup of tea. Thank you. That's what I like to hear, Brandon. That's what I like to hear. Rodon, he lifts the phone from the base and presses a few buttons. Miss Trey, would you be so kind? Would you be so kind to order two cups of mushroom tea for me and my guest? Excellent. In my office. Right. Good. He hangs up. He leans back into his chair. Ah, now we wait. Where were we? Yes. From what I understand, you want to join the Protectorate forces. Why is that, Rodon? What is your take in this hell? take on this hell holy crap I can't read what is your take on this hell we live in out of all these different factions you choose from you could choose from why underrail protectorate I see the protectorate as the future of underrail I believe unifying the stations under a single rule is the proper way to make underrail safe and prosperous correct what you said is true Brandon just let me tell you one thing, because I have a feeling that there could be some some misunderstanding. It is true, we want the world to be unified, safe, and, as you put it, prosperous. But if you have any dreams of it being done in a completely diplomatic way, you are wrong. The reason Protectorate exists is so that those who cannot be reasoned with can be stopped from undoing what we're building here. Like those free drones. They're anarchists. Do you know what anarchism is? Chaos. Complete chaos. You can't negotiate with that. So, in that very extreme case, we need to act appropriately. We're not savages. We don't abuse our power. When diplomacy can't be applied, force must be. The woman you saw out front enters the office. Colonel smiles. Miss Trey, how lovely. One is for Mr. Brandon, and one is for me. Thank you. She puts the cups down and leaves the office. Well, now the tea is here, how about I explain to you our du explain to you your duties here and all the other necessities? He takes a sip. Oh good, good. Nice and hot. So listen up. Rondon, you will, should you choose, should you chose to, choose to, choose so, chose so? 
should you choose so. Sorry, I am struggling. Brondon, you will, should you choose so, become a member of the Underrail Protectorate. You will not be a part of any existing force. Your role will be a bit more specialized. I'll be your commanding officer, and you will answer directly to me and me only. My word is the law here. Remember that. So, does that sound acceptable to you? Will you join the Protectorate? It is acceptable. I'm ready to join the Protectorate. Very good, very good. You refer to me as sir, and according to proper military etiquette, a junior officer always salutes his superior first. I suggest you familiarize yourself with proper military etiquette, because from now on, I'll accept no excuses. Am I clear on that? Yes, sir. That's what I'd like to hear. For your assistance in the recovery of the captured train, and for dedication to Protectorate, you're promoted to the rank of Corporal. Ooh, E4. And with that, you're allowed nearly full access to Fort Apogee, its food service, armory, mechanical shop, sleeping and training quarters, and so forth. While we're at it, you're advised to see Staff Sergeant Fraser, Fraser when you have the time. He's in charge of your payment, and you can purchase equipment from him at any time. Do note that you will need United Stations dollars to purchase anything in Fort Apogee. Staff Sergeant can help you with that. Uh, thank you, sir. Is that all, sir? I thank me by showing your dedication to Protectorate and the United Stations. We're far from over, Corporal. It just so happens that I have a mission for you. Let's see what you're made of, Corporal. Alright, uh, what can you tell me about Consul Oliver? Consul Oliver is a man of diplomacy, which is desirable considering he is he is the Consul. He chuckles. I have great respect for him and can rely on him. I must add that I am not someone who firmly believes that all issues can be resolved through superior firepower. But there are many occasions where exactly that is the case, and that is the reason Protectorate exists in the first place. When all hell breaks loose, it is our duty to deal with it and enforce order. Consul Oliver, unfortunately, often fails to realize that and comes to my office, proposing certain diplomatic alternatives, ones I know can't be applied to that in that particular case. Impossible, Corporal. Sometimes it's just impossible. Luckily, in those situations, I make the final decisions, no matter how difficult they sometimes are. And what can you tell me about Fort Apogee? Corporal, as you can witness for yourself, Fort Apogee is the main protectorate base in South Underrail. It's been five years since Protectorate first arrived to the cell, and we play a stay here until law and order is brought to this hell. It is hell, Corporal. You know it yourself. There are many obstacles in our way. Some are still present, but Fort Apogee still stands. True, we are being resisted by anarchists, bandits, and the like, but those are, but those are easy to deal with most of the time, due to our military superiority. Logistics, that is a bigger issue. But the bad public opinion of the Protectorate is perhaps the largest obstacle we have to overcome, unfortunately. Fort Apogee should be the symbol of law, order, protection, not tyranny and oppression, as our anarchists constantly claim. And it is something we are working hard on, Corporal. You're a part of the Protectorate now, Corporal. Never forget why we're here and what we fight for. Sir, have you ever heard of the Acorn, aka A. Connor? No, Corporal, I do not. It's a device capable of utilizing materials from its surroundings in order to construct complex objects and machinery. It could serve our cause greatly. He pauses, staring at you. How confident are you in the accuracy of this information? I have no reasons to doubt what I, what I just told you, sir. Mm-hmm. That's definitely an important matter. I need to check this. Wait. He picks up the phone. He looks at you but speaks to someone else. Travis? Yes, I'll wait. A minute later. Travis? Yes, I need information on ACOR. A C O N R. Alpha Charlie Oscar November Romeo. It's urgent, yes. Send everything you can to find send everything you can find to my computer. Copa Brondon knows more about it than me, and I don't like that. Mm-hmm. He puts the phone down. Now while we wait, what's the status of this technology? Is it something we can acquire? Do you know where it is? Uh yes, right here. Show him the acorn. He takes a curious look at the container, lingering on its unusual symbol. At the same time, something catches the colonel's eye, and he squints at his monitor. Wait a moment, it's from the captain. He clicks a few times, and his eyes start moving back and forth between the screen and the acorn. It's just like in the picture. I reckon the captain has produced the information you needed, sir. He answers you, still squinting at the screen. Yes, yes. This is it, alright. Apparently this file is from the time of Biocore. Must have come from the central archive. It says that both the technology and a ACORN units were produced by the New Frontier Technology Super Corporation. Time period unspecified. 
No information on how the technology itself, but the few sentences there are in this file. The few sentences there are in this file imply that it is an integral part in the realization of high technology mega projects of various kinds. Quote, each ACORN unit is thus of immeasurable value and must be kept under highest security. The coded signal needed for its activation is available only to a small number of select people. The rest is irrelevant. He looks at the ACORN. Well done, Corporal. Well done. Well done, Corporal. Well done. Okay, he just said it again. Now, now to have it put in a safe place. He reaches for his phone. Uh, here you go, sir. Give him the acorn. Yes, yes. Put it here. He points next to his desk. You hear a voice on the other end. Lieutenant, I need to speak to Captain Cassidy. Alright, I'll wait. He lowers the phone and looks at you. Hmm. Haven't changed your mind about mushroom tea, Corporal? Want a cup? Um, I'll have one, sir. He presses a button on his phone. Miss Trey, two cups of tea, please. After taking a sip of hot, taking a sip of hot mushroom tea, the colonel continues. Very good, very good. Before we proceed, let's take care of something first. He picks up the phone. Staff Sergeant, yes, this is Colonel Cathcart. Send a sum of twelve hundred to my office. Yes, you heard me correctly. Yes, I'm waiting. He puts the phone down. There, that's been taken care of. As soon as the blockade is cleared, I'm going to request a war train to carry this to North Underrail. In the meantime, I'll have this locked away in under guard. A soldier arrives with your money. The colonel points to you, and the soldier hands it over, salutes, and leaves. You know, Corporal, since we've touched on the super corporations of old, I remembered a conversation I had with General Korn a few years ago at, co at a cocktail. We had a conversation about security agency, another secu another super corporation that was dedicated to developing and manufacturing military technology and equipment. Apparently their war bots were the best out there, and make the protectorate look like common metro bandits. They deployed humanoid war bots, multi-legged all-terrain walkers, aircraft ranging from miniature recon drones to massive structure carriers, as well as vessels of inc inconceivable size and armament. And all of it was completely auto autonomic? Atomic. Yeah, autonomic. Uh, an army of emotionless warbots obeying every command, and self-replicating according to the general's words. He looks at the acorn, then at you, then chuckles. Seems unreal, doesn't it? He finishes his tea and puts the cup away. That's enough chit-chat, Corporal. Return to your duties, but if all goes well, you can expect a promotion. Alright, well I'm ready to start my first briefing, sir. He smiles. That's what I like to hear, Corporal. Listen up. Your first mission, I'm sending you to Epion... La okay. Yeah, I'm sending you to Epion Lab, currently under protectorate control. It's here in Upper Underrail, to the west of Fort Apogee. Epion Lab? A relic from the times of Biocore, Corporal. Abandoned a long time ago. What you need to know is that it's now under protectorate control, and it is a strategic location of extreme importance. So I was contacted by Captain Blackwall, the commanding officer there, and he informed me his patrols reported several strange sightings in the vicinity of Epion Lab. You're to report to the captain and assist him with his with this little problem. Once you've finished with him, report back to me. Am I clear so far? Yes, sir. Loud and clear, sir. Good. That's what I like to hear. Anything else you want to know before you head there? Now, how do I get to Epion Lab? There are two ways to get there, starting from Fort Apogee. If you head north, turn south at the first intersection. If you head south, turn north at the first intersection. You know you're on the right track if you follow the blue metro line. It will lead you to the train station that takes you to Epion Lab. Alright, sir, salute and leave. Let's go back and talk to the console, man. A lot of reading. Ah, Corporal, come on in. What can I do for you? Uh, what can you tell me about Colonel Cathcart? Colonel Cathcart is the base commander of Fort Apogee. He is an incredibly competent individual, and I feel, and I really mean it, and I'm quite fortunate to be working with him. You see, the United Stations and Protectorate work closely on accomplishing our common goals. The United Stations are concerned with diplomacy and integrations, Protectorate with enforcing law and order. Therefore, it is essential that the two understand each other well. With that said, Colonel Cathcart can be a bit adamant when it comes to certain things, especially when it comes to the age of old diplomatic versus combat approaches. Though fortunately our disagreements were few and far between, and naturally, such things are bound to happen from time to time. 
All in all, as far as I'm concerned, Fort Apogee has the best commander it could possibly have. And what can you tell me about Fort Apogee? While many associate Fort Apogee with the Protectorate military might, one must not forget that the United States Consulate is located here. All North Under Rail citizens, or generally citizens from any station that is a member of the Union, are always reminded that they can seek refuge here in case of emergency. It's been five years since the base was built, and while we still haven't integrated any of the South Under Rail stations, we've made enormous progress. For example, take a look at Junkyard. We have an embassy there, and as you know, Junkyard is one of the most hostile places in the South. Slowly but surely, we'll bring prosperity to this region. I truly believe it. Alright, you mentioned you wanted to discuss something with me. Indeed I have, Corporal. The situation I'm about to explain to you is not something that occurs often. In all honesty, this is the first time it has happened. At least as far as I'm aware. Perhaps that is the reason the Colonel asked my opinion on this. Can you tell me what happened? Yes, I can. <clears throat> he takes a deep breath. We have a problem with several Protectorate soldiers that have... gone Renegade. It happened before you arrived, not too long ago. A squad under the command of SFC Timothy Holloway had simply left Fort Apogee. No one ever said anything. Nothing happened they, that could suggest they, why they leave. Nothing. Nothing at all. They simply left? Uh, SFC? Sergeant First Class, please, Corporal. Uh, do you know where they are now? They've entrenched themselves, or so I've been told, in one of the stations. It's, um... Oh, for crying out loud. He takes a moment to think. Yes, Dolo Center, that's it. It's all the way to the west, past Core City Station. Uh, so I'm guessing you want me to talk to them, right? Bravo, Corporal, bravo. That is exactly what I want you to do. Find them and negotiate their return. The offense is quite serious, and the Colonel was ready to take drastic measures. I convinced him to allow me to send someone to attempt a more diplomatic approach first. You're an outsider, dear Corporal. Or you were when the Sergeant Squad went renegade. So it is my belief that they should feel less threatened by you, if you play your cards right. You were in no way connected to any of the recent going goings on in Fort Apogee. You couldn't have been. So the more neutral they perceive you to be, the better. That will happen to them if I convince them to come back. As I've said before, what they did is a serious offense. Court martial most certainly awaits them, and the usual penalty for desertion, well, death. However, if they surrender peacefully. Return might be a better word, if they return peacefully, then perhaps their punishment won't be as severe, considering that SFC Holloway is an outstand has an outstanding record. Everything is up to Colonel Cathcart in the end. So, what do you say to all this? I'll do it. Bravo, just bravo. I've told you everything I know, dear Corporal. If you need more information, the Colonel is your best bet. Good luck on your mission. Alright, let's talk to you about that. Uh, about the Renegade soldiers, sir. So, the Consul told you about those deserters. They're a disgrace, Corporal. A true disgrace to everything we stand for. Uh, what is it you wanted to ask? Do you know why they deserted, sir? I don't know the exact reason, Corporal. Although I was told by some of the officers that Holloway started acting strangely. That he was becoming more unstable. He even threatened one of them, as I was told once. Uh, did they come back from a mission before they left Fort Apogee? Or did something happen in the base, perhaps? The colonel hesitates for a second. All the mission details that the sergeant squad was a part of are classified. Therefore, I can't comment on them. Next question. Uh, let's see. Why didn't you send troops to apprehend them, sir? Corporal, the penalty for desertion is death. Has been and always will be, hopefully. If this were anything else, I'd have sent troops to apprehend the deserters without delay and court-martial them. If they couldn't be apprehended, well, they would be executed. Pure and simple. But... Tim Holloway is a decorated veteran who has served his duty with excellent dedication and results, so I'm willing to be... He struggles to find the right word. A bit more tolerant. If, and only if, they surrender immediately. If they refuse, Corporal, it will be interpreted as a sign of aggression, and they will have to be dealt with accordingly. And what can you tell me about SFC Holloway? Tim is a decorated veteran. He and his men are some of the best in the force. They've been through a lot of dangerous missions, some pure hell, they have shown dedication, bravery, and honor. Yet they deserted the Protectorate, and did so in a critical period. Some officers told me he was starting to lose it, but I don't know. The only reason we're trying to negotiate this is because of his squad's previous record, 
nothing else. Punishment awaits them, that is certain, but if they show reason, they might mitigate their sentence. What should I do if the negotiations fail? If you find yourself in a difficult situation, Corporal, then by all means you're allowed to defend yourself. Otherwise, just report back to Consul, we'll do the rest. What happens to the rest of the squad if SFC Holloway was somehow removed? Removed? Well, Corporal, I don't know what would happen. Those men are loyal to him, but I think they could perhaps be easier to convince to surrender in that case. Or, they could decide to go out in a blaze of glory. One can never be sure. I have no more questions, sir. Alright, well, there we go. How can I help you, handsome? I... Brondon? Okay. Can we talk to this guy now? They even have cameras in the toilet. Laughs. Just kidding. It's all clear. It's all clear. Whew, man. I was struggling to read that stuff. Tough times. Alright, let's check out some of these shops and stuff. Talk to some of these merchants. He puts a strapping young lad. He seems to be working with great speed and precision, serving the soldiers, talking to the cook, even noticing you standing outside of the queue, attempting to, attempting to start a conversation. Oh, Corporal, hello. First time seeing you here. Welcome to the DFAC, better known as the Mess Hall. He laughs. As you can probably tell, we're quite busy here. He turns to the cook. Running low at Rat Hound Stew, cost. Everyone calls me Case, sir, especially when they're hungry. But then it often sounds like, hey Case, step it up, boy. We're starving here. He laughs. I am hungry. Can I see what you have? Sure. You have to wait your t wait for your turn, Corporal. Hope you didn't um mean to jump the queue. No, not at all. Oh, good. Glad to hear it. He watches you, clearly waiting for you to stand at the back of the queue. Wait for your turn. Okay. Feeling hungry, Corporal? Uh, does everyone eat here, or just the soldiers? Well, sir, the mess hall is for everyone. Everyone from Fort Apogee, that is. He laughs. Soldiers, workers, mechanics, medical staff, officers. Makes the atmosphere a bit more interesting, in my opinion. For instance, you can see Luca, our head mechanic, and Anastasia, um, Dr. Merrick, sitting together and chatting. Two completely different people, different backgrounds, jobs. They sit down, chat, joke, or discuss important subjects. Like childhood friends, even though they are far from it. But others are not so friendly. Uh, some northerners here feel they shouldn't socialize with us. Southerners, that is. Like, for example, Eric. I mean, Staff Sergeant Fraser. He stops for a moment, looking around. He suspected that he realized he spoke the name a bit too loud. Uh, why did you join the Protectorate? Opportunity presented itself, sir. I am a southerner, just like you. I wanted to... just a second. He counts the dollars and gives the change back to one of the soldiers. Yeah, thanks. Enjoy your meal. Where was I? Oh yes. I want to get away from all that and help my fellow southerners. I... I think this is a rotten place to live in. Poverty, death, disease, people. Then Underrail Protectorate arrived. United Stations. Unification. It seemed like the right idea at the time. Still does, actually. So, how did you end up in the mess hall? I have some knee issues. Rotten thing. Um, not literally, of course. It's just, I wasn't meant to be a soldier, Corporal. He smiles. Wasn't meant to be. Oh, what can you tell me about the free drones? I, I can't talk about that, Corporal. Forgive me. It's complicated. Huh. I wish I had persuasion. It's not going to work. Uh, tell me when the cube clears, if it's something you don't want everyone to hear. He considers it he considers it for several moments. Looks really uncomfortable. Still, your words seem to have persuaded him. How? I don't know, I don't have any persuasion. Whatever. Let's wait for the queue to clear. Just another moment. After the queue finally disperses, Case leans on the counter and whispers to you. Free drones, I I know several people who are members, fighters. However you want to call them. Oh, and this stays between us, of course, sir. Anyway, I've known those people since childhood. They were good kids. Good men and women later. I couldn't possibly imagine them joining in an, an anarchist group. A violent group like the Free Drones. Do you have friends there? Do you still see them? Of course not. Are you derailed? Um, sir? If anyone was to find out, look, 
I know they are our enemies, and the drones are ruthless and rotten and everything. But I always think of my, my childhood friends. They're always in my head whenever I hear drones mentioned. What if they were killed somewhere? Captured? What if I see them again? Or they see me, working for the Protectorate? It's confusing. Do you dig? I mean, understand what I mean, Corporal? Well, you have to forget about them. Well, I understand. Life is not black and white, as some would like to believe. Thank you for listening, Corporal. Thank you. He spots a person approaching. Um, let's change the subject. Hi, uh... Yeah, we'll finish talking to him, then we'll call it an episode. Where in Fort Apogee can I exchange currencies? Staff Sergeant Fraser can help you with that, Corporal. He's by the entrance. Hard to miss, sir. Uh, what can you tell me about Fraser? He pauses briefly. Corporal, you know how they often say, if you can't say something nice about someone, don't say anything at all? <laughs> what can you tell me about Consul Oliver? Well, sir, I respect the Consul. I really do. And he is a very dedicated man. One who believes that the unification should be accomplished primarily through diplomatic means. Which is unlike some of the recent shoot first and ask questions later kind of policies. But he, um, he needs to have, um, needs what? After a brief moment, he finds the word he was looking for. He needs bigger stones, sir. Fort Apogee is an odd place, and something stranger than the rest of the South. And something stranger than the rest of South Underrail. You need to elbow your way through it if you want something done. And the poor consul, he just plays it too nice. But again, I respect him. I really do. And I'm not the only one. Uh, what can you tell me about Colonel Cathcart? Well, sir, his work is rather difficult. I can tell you. He has to deal with a lot of, well, problems. All South Underrail troops are under his direct command, so it takes a real man to be able to coordinate that. Is he the man? I think he is. It can be a rotten place, South Underrail. You and me know it, Corporal. Five years ago, Protectorate had no presence in the South. Now, I mean, we'd have more if Core City wasn't in the way. But still, look at us now. We're expanding our influence. I think the South will benefit from it. I really do. What can you tell me about Luca? Hey, he's a fellow Southerner, just like you and me, sir. One from Core City. First man I befriended in this rotten place. Whoops. I didn't mean it and I didn't mean it that way, he laughs. Although my first days here felt sort of like Although my first days here sort of felt like that. Anyway, he's the head mechanic. You can find him in the mech bay. He fell in love with dreadnoughts from the moment he laid his eyes on the beasts, and I can't blame him. Those machines are nice. Hardcore. Hardcore. We often hang out near the ring, have a few brews. Okay, a lot of brews. You're free to join us, Corporal, if you have the time and will. Uh, what can you tell me about Anastasia? His expression saddens. You know, if you ask people about Doc Merrick, everyone immediately goes, Oh, poor woman. Her voice is ruined. She this, she that. Move aside. I mean, really. Look past that. You don't need to constantly yap about it and show that you recognize how difficult it is for her. Talk about the good about her being a great person, a great doctor. You dig? I mean, not you, but the people around here. Personally, it's my honor to put food on her plate every day. I make sure I always greet her with a smile. She deserves it. And what can you tell me about the faceless? I've heard stories of tunnelers, better known as faceless, since I was a little kid. But I never believed any of that. Now that story is different. Everyone is aware of them, and everyone is afraid of those rotten cyborgs, whatever they are. It's not their looks, it's not their weapons or their huge tunneling machines that frightens everyone. It's that we know so little about them. You dig? Understand what I'm saying, sir? It's the fear of the unknown that makes the faceless so... dreadful. Okay, so... I know where Fraser's at. I don't know where... I'm assuming the mech bay and everything else is this way. All right, in the next episode, we'll continue explore exploring Fort Apogee. Man, my voice is struggling. Whew. 
Yeah, we'll finish exploring Fort Apogee and talking to all the relevant individuals. Uh, Frazier, I guess, Anastasia, and the mechanic, whose name I don't remember. Also, I'm dressed just like that guy. Anyway, and then uh, we'll go and head towards Epion Labs, probably first, and then we'll do Dolos. I'll probably do both while we're out. You want to take care of both of those while we're out and about. Then we'll come back here. Anyway, calling it here. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys in the next episode.